hire someone to, to water an acre of grass yeah. or bring in enough trees to cover an acre of Sorry, Chris, we were muted. Oh, no, that's fine. I am so sorry. I, 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 Mike told you I just landed from Salt Lake and uh, went and grabbed dinner and it just slipped my mind, so I apologize. Oh, that's all right. So are you okay to meet here for a little bit? Yes, but absolutely, I, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order. Appreciate everyone being here. Thank you very much. And... Uh, I'll just call for a review and approval of our April 13th, 2022 minutes. They're posted on our city website. I reviewed them today and they looked okay to me, but I'd call for a motion from someone to approve those. Let's, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, we got a motion from Newt. And uh, I guess I can second that. Mm -hmm. So I will second it and say all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And then to stand approved. Uh, we'd want to welcome Tim Larson with us today and thank him for being willing to join our committee. And uh, let's, uh, let's do some introductions here so he knows who the finance committee is. Tim, why don't you password. Or listen, and I'll just share it with you. Why don't you start, Tim? Okay, great. So my name's Tim Larson. Uh, my wife and I just moved into the Audley's home in early January. Um, we had lived in Warren for about 35 years. And uh, our son, Randy Larson, who some of you probably know, I know Mike, you know him. Yeah, um, David and Chris both know him. He's lived up here for several years, and my wife kind of fell in love with it up here. So we actually bought a lot about three years ago, four years ago, I guess. And we were gonna build and then everything kind of went crazy and we decided to pull back and just wait and see what happened. And then Otley's house became available and as 
suited most of what needs we had and then some. And uh, so we just made that move. It was good to have a fixed price rather than an unknown <laughs> amount as to what it might take to build a home. So <coughs> we're happy to be here on a CPA by profession. Um, I'm part-time now. I'm semi-retired as of uh, May 1. Um, but I'm working about uh, 20 hours a week at this point. So I'll do that for a few more years. Are you, are you, do you do tax? Do you do? No, tax. Okay, yeah. So they say 20 hours a week, does that mean like 100 for April? Yeah, it does. Yeah, and then, and then nothing the rest of the year. Then I play golf in the summer and <laughs> fall. <laughs> yeah. I have to, I, I, my person, I have to get like, up at one in the morning for about during the six week period and I'll talk to my, my tax guy. And usually he doesn't answer then, but sometimes he might respond to a text at that, that, that hour. Otherwise, so I know. Yeah, I'm a little too old to stay up at those late hours, but it's long hours, yeah. certainly yeah. in that yeah. country. Well, I, I think it's awesome to have a CPA on here, and and uh, yes. maybe I'll uh, go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Newt Adams, I've been in Woodland Hills since '99, and uh, I'm not a an accountant, but I got a degree in accounting. Oh. And actually, I'm starting to kind of bring that back up to speed and do a little bit of type that type of finance work. Profession. I've been kind of semi-retired myself for quite a while, and uh, got got tired of it. So. Is that what working from home is called? Well, yeah, but I mean, I yeah, yeah. So <laughs> anyhow, um, but so I've kind of been an entrepreneur, had some different experiences, and uh, but always kind of been really into the numbers and enjoy that, and so that's kind of how I got on the committee. I've been on the committee for maybe a year or so now. So yeah, sounds good. Thank you, Newt. Dave, why don't you go next? Uh, well, um, so I'm David Pratt, and I am not an accountant um, or a CPA. Um, my, my role on the committee is as the uh, council liaison uh, to the committee. Um, I, my background is actually software development. Um, I've done software development at WordPerfect, Novell, um, and a few other companies since then. And then now I'm at BYU. So I've been working at BYU for 10 years. Um, so yeah, I know Randy real well. And uh, in fact, he mentored as a master's candidate my nephew. Oh, good. So and anyway, so that was kind of interesting. Um, and now I'm at the law school, but I'm doing their IT. Um, as far as the city, I've lived here since 2000, um, and uh, absolutely loved it. Both my wife and I are from Oregon, so it came as close as you can get to Oregon and Utah. And Where so, in Oregon? Uh, we both grew up just outside of Eugene. Okay, because my wife is from Oregon. Okay. From Beaverton. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, I mean, we've got a lot of family still there, so that's generally where we go on vacation. Um, and then as far as the whole city council, I've been on the council now for five years, four years, somewhere in that ballpark, um, and generally enjoyed it. Five years. <laughs> yeah, it has been five years. Yeah, I'm sure it's been five years. Oh, it's, it's close. I was on the planning commission prior to that, mm -hmm. um, and it's been, it's been an interesting opportunity to serve, um, um, for the most part, it's been good. Every once in a while, it's not, but that's the nature of it. I don't consider myself a politician, so I, I speak very, very straight and say it the way it is. That my main goal with being on the council is just to kind of help the city become a little more professional. Um, now, when I say that, that makes it sound like they weren't before, and that's not the way I perceive it at all. Instead, I perceive it as, you know, kind of a growing pattern. I mean, when I moved in, <laughs> we took our, our house plans to some guy in American Fork and dropped it off on his porch. And then a few weeks later, he called us up and said, okay, they're ready to pick up. And I went and picked him up on his porch. I brought him to a person's house here. 
who stuck him in her in her city room in her house and you know it's just a maturing process we started as a town and then we became a city but we were always a small city and then we've now been growing and so you know it's just a, a, a process of, of maturing and getting bigger and, and putting in place processes that match the, the size that we are now so that's the way I perceive it Thank you. Chris? <laughs> Excuse me. Are you related to Joseph Larson by chance? No, I know Joseph Larson, but we're not related. I just need to make sure I needed to disclose anything here, but we're good. Um, so my name is Chris Helby. I was a homeowner until Valentine's Day of this year. We moved in in 96. And um, I also work and manage several charter schools throughout Utah and Hawaii. And uh, we opened a new charter school in St. George, and it was an opportunity for us to come down here and babysit it for a while. And while we're babysitting that, we fell in love with St. George. So um, I've been doing the uh, finances since about 90, September of 99 for the city. And uh, I've seen a lot of growth and a lot of changes and a lot of good people that have helped grow the city along the way. And um, so it's, it's a good good organization. Good to be working with these guys here. and and um, trying to make that penny go as far as we can. Thank you, Chris. When did you start doing the finances, Chris? September of 99. Wow. So are you like the city recorder? Um, so in, you, in our city, since our city recorder does not have financial background, we have a director of finance, and that's my position since our recorder is not financial. So, so are you an employee uh, of the city then? I am, yes. Okay. Yeah. And something Chris won't tell you is he served many years on our fire department mm -hmm. as one of our leaders. Chief, right? You were one of the chiefs. Everybody's a chief in that department, so yes. Right. <laughs> well, not everybody, but, you know, served, served well. So I and, might. Oh, oh, sorry. Can he also. He's kind of the. Because we don't have a city manager, Chris does a lot of the city management stuff. So when it comes to getting um, bonds, uh, working out financing with Zions, that kind of thing, that's that's Chris's role. Great. Yeah. I still own a couple acre or about an acre and a half up there still. So we, we're still residents or property owners. Yeah. I'm Mike Taylor. You've met me, uh, Tim, and uh, we've served on this committee, what, about two years now? Started under Mayor uh, Wendy Frey, and she came to me and asked me if I would uh, come and participate in this. And how it ever happened that I became chairman, I'm not sure. But <laughs> I'm uh, certainly not an accountant, but I'm very good at listening to the accountants and learning from them, and uh, wanting to do what is best for the city, no matter what that is, for the residents of the community. And I think that the purpose of this committee is to be more of a vetting committee of projects and things like that, such as we have several water lines going in and our, our assignment at that time was to go through all of the study, all of the, the water uh, bills in the city, what we were bringing in and, and being able to uh, raise those to a level that it would bring us in to get some money to put our water line to them. And, and we're in the process of doing that. We'll probably talk about it tonight. Yeah, I saw that on the agenda. Yeah, so yeah that was news to me that you had to, to qualify them for the certain financing, you had to charge a certain amount. And it was based, it was, it's always interesting, it's based on the average income of the people who live in the area. And yeah, that was very interesting to me, but that was a kind of a fun little project because we had some really good help putting the spreadsheets together. And, yeah. and we got together just kind of crunching numbers and bounced it back and forth. And um, that's probably a good example of I think what I think we can do as a as a committee. Yeah. We've had like the snow plows in the city and, mm -hmm. and those two there's two snow plows you see going down the ropes now that, that we vetted and and became operational in the city. So so that's what we do. I'll just speak from the council's perspective. I mean, we have two meetings a month. 
and those meetings already last about four hours. And so we just don't have the time to vet, you know, like, should we do lease or should we do purchase? Yeah. Should we do this or should we do that? And so that's what this committee is able to do for us and, um, and kind of come up with the best plan long term. And then we just get the information from the committee and, and that saves us a lot of time and energy. I felt really strongly that we needed a CPA on the committee here. So when you, your name came up, I was excited that that was a possibility. So really appreciate your presence here. Well, there's some people in my office that are much more qualified at governmental accounting than I am, but I am a CPA. Um, well, I mean, you probably already exceed us by a long shot, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, Chris. Obviously, the books are very open, and that, that's what we kind of depend on. I think Chris to have that expertise, but then he, we have the books, we can see, and we can go in and question things, and and so uh, I don't know that any of us need to be experts. Maybe it would be great if we had one, but we, you're not going to have that in the city of. Of what we have, eighteen hundred residents or whatever, it's not very likely we're gonna. Have, we're lucky to have Chris, I think, in that sense. Absolutely. So. So, Chris, the next thing on the agenda here is to have a briefing on our city budget numbers and and uh, where we're at at this time. Um, you have you have dispersed those. Um, in fact, you dispersed those to us back on so, in May. For May. So we have that's what that, we that's have those, and it's we just want to get your opinion on what, what you think about the numbers. Do we, we have any major concerns or anything like that? Now, the council went ahead and voted on the fiscal year 2022 budget to uh, we kind of clean things up because it's been a while since the council looked at it. So those numbers were cleaned up, brought in line, and also voted in the affirmative. So so Corbett and everybody has their budgets for the next. 30 days or whatever um, that they can finalize. We also are moving some money into next year because of some road projects that aren't quite ready. And we wanted to make sure, council was really wanting to make sure that those were locked out of the general, that they wouldn't get rolled up in the general monies on June 30th. So that was that was good. And we moved monies over to the road capital projects fund, specifically for Little for Drive and some other projects that are going on. The uh, So this year is gonna finish, it looks like it's gonna finish right on target, if not, be in the positive a little bit. <clears throat> I do want to bring up that in 2022, we projected taking over $200,000 out of savings. And because of some, some tweaking and some additional revenues that we received, we actually got that down to zero, but we took some monies out of savings that we were going to save for like the fire trucks and roads and things. So we're actually going to end up taking about $65,000 out of savings. And all it really is doing is taking it from savings to another savings, which or a budget that we thought we were going to take over 200,000 out to really taking zero out is phenomenal this year. So that's, that was a huge blessing. So going for, forward, Chris, is the plan to still, when we get the new fire truck to not put a down payment on it, but basically pay as we go, is that still, <clears throat> or were we no. able to actually have that money now set aside to put a down payment on it? Council unanimously voted to keep that savings going. So by the time the fire truck comes, we'll have about $150,000 to put down on it. That's, that's great. So that's good news. So the way we kind of talked about it in the council meeting was this. I mean, you're moving, you're moving money from savings, but it's what you might consider the general savings account or the slush fund savings account. Instead, you're moving it into targeted savings accounts. So we could have gone to zero, but then we would have moved nothing into the targeted savings accounts. Instead, what we're saying is we'll take 65000 out of the general savings account, put it into the targeted savings accounts for the fire trucks and some of the other, um, the other uh, EMS, I think, is another one. And uh, I can't remember all five. I think there's like five categories that we have. Park, snow plowing, EMS, fire, and um, roads. Roads. So, Chris, what, what is the the law on our regulation for us on savings. I mean, we can't have an excessive amount, can we? So within the general account, we're allowed to carry three to 18% over. In the capital projects account, if we have identified projects, 
those can be carried over, no, no stipulations. And within our enterprise fund, our water account, um, that is considered a for-profit account and doesn't fall into the regulations of any kind of savings. So our general account, that's our goal is to get three to 18%. Just for Tim's um, and for your guys' news, the past three years, we have saved too much money. We keep getting letters from the state saying that we're saving too much money. Um, I, the council typically overlooks that just because that's not a bad thing, but we gotta be careful that we're not taxing the citizens too much um, and saving too much because of our taxation. But that's not been the case. It's been because of the mitigation or it's because some some bills didn't come in that we thought were gonna get done in June and the money wasn't transferred out in enough time. This year, I think we've got it. We shouldn't see that, that notice. Okay. So it sounds like we're in pretty good shape on our budget. Yeah, a couple. Of, so, do we have any? Do we have any public in there, or just you guys? Say that again, Chris. Just us. Okay. I just wonder if there's public there. I just want to know who my audience is. <clears throat> so, a couple other things for this current year and next year. I still have a concern about the attorney expenses, because now that the insurance company is not covering the cost of the litigation and, and that's solely at the the burden of the citizen. Luckily, there hasn't been a lot, a lot of work done from the actual lawsuit itself, which is Snow Christensen and. I can't remember their other name up there. Um, so I don't foresee we're going to get huge bills between now and June 30th for their work. However, I've personally been in meetings with the mayor and um, Smith and Smith. We've had a lot of meetings lately. So I would suspect their bill is going to be up under the $15,000 range this month, just because some of the other litigated and the referendum and things that are coming across right now. But we're going to be okay in the budget. We're going to have enough money in there. But next year, we're going to really want to watch it on a on a quarter by quarter, if not a month by month basis, to make sure that we have enough in there. Jumping into the 2023 budget, we are going to have a truth in taxation hearing the first Tuesday, excuse me, the second Tuesday in August to discuss raising property taxes. Um, yes, it will be on August 9th. <clears throat> so at a bare minimum, we ought to keep the certified tax rate the same or level as it is this year if not increase it somewhat to cover the inflation the inflation that we're, we're bearing the brunt of right now. I know they're saying inflation on the CPI is about eight to 9%, and that's great and dandy, but in asphalt and you can get concrete, it's a whole lot higher than that. We just need to determine, not us, the council's gonna have to determine how high they wanna raise that tax rate. So that's on August 9th. We have a meeting scheduled on August 10th. <laughs> Or that's, I, I haven't said, I said, I said that wrong, where it's pending date of our next meeting is August the 10th. That's what I put on the agenda. So we'll talk about that tonight. If you think we need to meet prior to that, before this, in any way that cover uh, and help the council on this in any way, we'll be glad to do that. So, As we learned in the one, two years ago, three years ago, it's going to be a big messaging. And with some of the negativity going on from certain citizens right now, it's probably going to be good that we come out of the gate strong with some strong messaging of what the money's going for, why we're raising it. Keep it simple, keep it succinct, and not get in the quagmire that the this group will pull us into. So, David, is there anything we can do as a committee to help the council on this? Um, I don't think so. So, Glenn Anderson, I know from the um, Transparency Committee, was working on a piece. He interviewed me, I imagine he interviewed Chris as well. Friday we will. <clears throat> okay. And that'll go out. Um, again, the, the biggest message is the the increase that I believe we're shooting for is I say it's small. No increase is fun. Nobody likes to pay more in taxes. But it's I think it's gonna be in the three to four percent range in my Right, Chris? Hey, that's well, on the small side, yes. So that's that's city. So that's city. city side. And so, you know, we're, and, you know, my, I mean, I've said this before, but my attitude around taxes is one, I mean, the inflation on construction projects is way bigger than that. It's about 40% year over year. <laughs> and so, for us to do roads now is costing us a lot more. And so if we don't at least do a little increase each year, 
we fall so far behind so fast. And so it just seems smarter to me, fiscally, to do small increases over time rather than have one big increase every four or five years. I would agree with that. Well, I think as a citizen, it's a lot easier to swallow, but it has to be sold that way because there are any increase is going to be considered that. But yeah. yet for my hey, inflation is nine percent. As a city, we're doing the most of our expenses are roads and things that are going up a lot faster than inflation. And it's as it's the messaging and how it's portrayed. I think will be the the key. But I agree, we need to go a little bit instead of just the the ten and fifteen percent increases don't ever sit well. And, I think that's the year you don't want to be elected is on the council or <laughs> us on the committee or the mayor or whatever. So, yeah. I laughed because that's actually the year I was up for election. It was the year the mayor proposed a 20% increase. And I, <laughs> she didn't tell us about it before she made it public. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Thank well, you. It's that hard to get elected. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any more discussion on budget? That we need anymore. I don't believe unless there's any questions, but any questions that any of the committee members have? I don't have any at this time, Chris. Sounds like none. So let's go to the next item. Any update on the phase two, phase three water line projects? Have you heard anything, David? Okay, so we have, as I mentioned, um, last meeting we we have the plans for them phase three is just to be clear um is that's, that's, our, area. that's our area that's your area <laughs> that while we're planning it it's not going to happen for a long time probably 10 to 15 years that's the latest is it increasing in size or just replacing or what well yeah it, it is increasing in size for those that have they started in this the phase two I think it's all phase two that's yeah. that all brings us just up to current code where you live is a thousand oaks is that what it's called no. it was done to, to the current code okay. and there's never been issues two years ago where I lived they were having leaks every week and uh, <clears throat> it was old it was beat up and and so uh, the, so the first two phases were kind of set up to hey replace this old bad stuff and. They really did a good job, I think, of pinpointing which area to start because I don't think there's been many leaks since then. So the phase two has to go forward just to bring us up to code, if I remember everything correctly. But phase three, there's not the same need. So Yeah, the phase two, the, the remainder is that needs to be done is six inch line. Everywhere else throughout the city, and what we just recently put in was eight inch pipe which that's what we mean when we say bring us up to code. Mm -hmm. So um, again, phase two is the piece that we really wanted to try and get some funding and I'll just spill over into grant monies because there was some hope that we would be able to get some of this federal money, stimulus <coughs> money that was given to the state. The state was given a hundred million some odd dollars. Remember all the infrastructure promises, shovel ready, and we, we thought were, we could tap it. We, we were asking for like two million of that and uh, instead Salt Lake County got it all so anyway. well is, it, is that the infrastructure bill that, that Biden passed mm -hmm. uh, is that all been allocated then? well we got to be careful because there was the infrastructure bill um, that I think did not get passed it got stopped in the Senate and so that was one bill but there was some uh, there was another bill that included some infrastructure money that was fairly significant. Like I said, Utah got over $100 million and um, that got allocated to other things. So we did not get our fair share of that. We got the goose egg, I think, is how much we got, right? Yeah, I, I would say ignored, skunked, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. 94. 94. Yeah, for the committee to send a letter to Joe Biden. To Joe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you'd like. <laughs> I'm sure that'd go a long ways. But Tim, for your information, on phase one, it cost us $3.1 million. To phase one of the water? Of the water. Mm -hmm. To replace, go to an eight-inch line and do all that replacing and 
we got about 300,000, Chris, am I right in that? About 300,000 forgiven on that? Yes. Yeah, we got about 300,000 forgiven. So we've, we've bonded and, and financed. And it's zero interest too, the rest, right? Zero that's zero correct. So that's a great deal right now. Is that state money that, or is it just a floated bond? No, it's, well. Rural. Rural. Uh, yeah, you talk about rural water yeah. association. Yeah. So it's kind of a combination. I think the state gives it to them, and then they loan it out, and then they see it. However, phase two is a, a linear, shorter distance, but. It's going to cost more for about four points, some odd. Yeah, it's pushing five million. I think is what I remember. Two point five for each phase A and or A and two A and two B was what ten was it ten? No. Yeah. Yeah, is it ten? Yeah. Ted. 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 I'm like Ted. it sounds. It sound, one syllable starts with the T. I was close. <laughs> um, anyhow, that's I think what he had said. We I don't know now. Now it's starting to sound more reasonable. When he said it the first time, it was kind of a head scratcher. But yeah, it might it's probably more today than it was then. So. So we're we're in a little bit of sticker shock on that one, but and the free money, I mean not free, but the, the interest free money is gone. It's, it's no longer available, right? Isn't it, aren't we at two or three percent now? We have, we can try to get money. We we if there's money available, we can try and get more free money. But additional monies we get now, water rates have to go up. Right. Yeah. So we got to work cut out for us on that. Anything we can help you with on that? I. I don't believe so. If if I'm again, I'm I'm kind of reading my own tea leaves and the, those of the rest of the council. I think we're looking more at next year than anything this year. Next so year, I, meaning the fiscal year next year, or actually in 2023. Probably just the calendar. If we do anything, even then. Okay. Right now, we're just kind of saying, let's. Especially with you know drought and all this other stuff, you know, let's just kind of stay stay put for now, and then let's look at next year as as another opportunity. But isn't it accurate that that since we've done phase one, the number of repairs have gone down to almost zero? Emergency repairs. Phase one, so, yeah. <clears throat> it, it was it was crazy because I was out walking one day and there was a you know this it looked like. A, Jed Clampett, you know, shooting with the, and it was just coming out of the ground and I called up and sure enough, it was just one of like four that month or something. It was crazy. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm glad to hear that at least the other phase two six inch line is holding up better. I actually went and took some pictures of the line down in when Craig Northup, our chief, was down there and Corbett working on a, a broken line. I, I, I was quite interesting to see how they were fixing those with those big, they have those big sleeves. Mm -hmm. I had to put those on. That was pretty, pretty awesome the way they did that. So anyway, we've got some good people in this community that really dig in and get those things fixed for us. And water's water's an essential necessity for us. Uh, cameras. Any update on that, Chris? On our security cameras? I don't remember where we left off last time. Um, Utopia had two orders in there for installing. They wanted to put a whole new shed up with the water tanks, and we couldn't figure out why. So until we, we finally spent a couple hours with them to figure out that somebody from their side had put in, not only run the line up to the water tanks, but to bring a whole new shed and racks and all this kind of stuff. And we're like, no, we've already got a shed up there. So I believe the line has been installed. Since that conversation, I've turned it 100% over to Chief just because then that way he can work with the camera guy and work with Utopia to get this final edit. and and kind of no more middlemen between me and Corbin and Jody. So, so Craig's working on that. I believe he still might be in Colorado Springs with Doral today, um, presenting our fire stuff. Are you fighting fire out there? No, they're, they were presenting that. I don't know if you saw the video that they've made of, of our city and how we've cleaned it up so much because of the firewise grants that they've been giving us to clean it up. And so they all expense paid trip to Colorado Springs and Mandoral, and they made this great video. Oh, wow. Well, I'll take an assignment on to get with Craig on that then and see where we're at. I'll do that, David. Okay. 
Okay, any other items for possible discussion? Are the cameras just at the water tank? No, they're going to be water tank here, here at the fire station, the the city offices, and down at the mailboxes. And I think the park. The park, the park. But the the hold up, we, we got it approved and and it was getting the internet to the, the water tanks was what was, I guess, preventing the vendor from going in and actually doing mm -hmm. it installed. Is that right, Chris? Is that? Yep. And then they wanted to go rebid all the cameras again because the Costco system is cheaper. Or I don't know. Uh, anyways, but it's we're on target. It's been approved. We're just, they didn't realize how much work. Well, some of the council members didn't realize how much work you guys have put into it. Um, so it's all, it's ready to go. As soon as the fiber's in, Craig can call Ryan at, um, at Skywire and get those cameras installed. Okay. So that, that was been vetted, Tim, and Any other items for discussion? Okay. I don't know that there's any public on here to do public comment. It doesn't appear so. Pending date of next meeting is Wednesday, August 10th, 8 p.m. Does that work for everyone? It's two months out. If we don't have to go to the ninth meeting and sit in the front of the group with convenient citizens, then. <laughs> How much fire can you shield from us? <laughs> I, I'd be more worried about you shielding me. Right, yeah, and that's true. <laughs> hopefully, and hopefully, I, I think I'm, I'm willing to say, hey, we did. It wasn't just some decision that was made without input from citizens. If people get nasty, but I don't know. Have you have you kind of stood there in the line of fire at the, one of these meetings before? I've been at them, but I'm not in the line of fire. No, it's really the mayor and the council that take the heat and honestly the last time uh, we, because we did this last year right remember we did a small increase last year um, we did a bigger increase the year before that's when we took a lot of heat the smaller increases don't really generate quite as much heat and again that's another reason why I'm kind of in favor of that and just from a fiscal management it's so much better it's what I've asked a lot of the council members of some of the other cities, like Payson, they do the same thing. They do a small increase almost every year. Um, Salem, Spanish Fork, all the same. So I'm wondering on this, David, you tell me, what if we put our meeting on the ninth that night later, and then you don't have two meetings to back to back? Well, you'll have a city council meeting after. Oh, there's a council meeting after, so that would so it's six o'clock for the first one and kind of the truth and taxation or whatever. Yeah, yeah, typically. Okay, so that wouldn't work. So we'll stay with the 10th then, if that works for everyone. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah good. We'll August, it's too hot to do work outside anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. Actually, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Dave, I would I would recommend you guys do at least an eight percent. If you're not going to do at least eight, I wouldn't do it at all, because three percent is still going to put us five percent behind on CPI. <clears throat> so it's it's almost I know it gets to something, but it doesn't get at least keep us caught up to the inflationary rates at the moment. Okay, I thought when we had discussed it, we I, I realized you didn't have the final numbers in, but. I thought that we were we were more in a three to four percent range. Um, I can double check those again. I, yeah, you guys may have actually done that, didn't you? That's what we told the county. Let me tell. Let me see what the county. I told the county real quick. Because we didn't have the certified tax rate, but <clears throat> we, that's that's kind of what we talked about. <clears throat> Mr. Tax CPA, you probably know this already, so just tell me if you knew it already. But basically, what happens? And this is this is government at its finest. So I think they know where you're headed. So <clears throat> we have to have a budget that is in place by June. Um, we vote on it the first council meeting in June. And that's supposed to go for the entire next year. So July 1 on. 
but July 1 to the July next year. Yeah, that's right. But we don't have the certified tax rate from the county yet. And so we have to put together a budget with kind of an assumption of what our certified tax rate will be, a preliminary number, and then we get the final number sometime later. It's, it's about September, isn't it? When you get well, when we get the final certified tax rate, has to be done. It has to be by statute before June twentieth. Well, that's when we have to have the budget passed. No, no, the tax rate from the state of Utah has to be to us by June twentieth or earlier. Okay, cool. So June twentieth. So another. This is crazy, but another reason to do a truth in taxation hearing, even if you're not going to raise taxes, is because by doing that, we pass the budget but we get one more window at the end of August to pass the final budget. Yeah. And we then know the certified tax rate for sure, instead <coughs> of guessing or trying to get close. So anyway, that's, that's another reason for the truth in taxation hearing being a good idea. Now, do you, did you see what you told the county? Yeah, no, so actually I got ahead of myself. So we need $857,000 in property taxes to make this budget balance. So until the, the county or until the state sends us what our tax rate's gonna be, then we take the difference between the tax rate and the 857,000, that's gonna be the percentage that we can come up with. Yeah, and that's an increase of around 100 and... Estimated, <clears throat> let me see, it's estimated right now. We've received 790 this year, so 857, so 80 ish $85,000. Okay. So, um, and that's the other thing is then you factor in new building, which, you know, and as well as appraisals and things like that. Right. And so that's where, that's where that certified tax rate really becomes a critical number for us to know how much money are we actually going to get. So anyway, that's just background. Okay, so we'll keep our meeting on the tenth then. Yeah, I think that's fine. It can be it can be a pretty short meeting. Doesn't need to be. And it, we can review what was said in the truth and taxation hearing and see if you want to make a recommendation to the council one way or the other. Okay, that sounds good. We'll go for August tenth for that meeting. With no further discussion, I'll call for a motion of the. <coughs> Here, a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Nice to meet you. All right. Hey, thanks, Chris. Are you so you're in Salt Lake City right now? No, I just flew back. I had to go up yesterday for some meetings, and then I, I flew back this afternoon and landed about seven. <laughs> Came in Saturday. You're, you're at home now. I'm in St. George. I, I get the impression you're sitting in an airport somewhere. No, no, no. <laughs> I have done that before, but no, it's, uh, I'm back home. All right. I had the same impression. Right. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I'm, I'm at home. Hey, I stayed, I stayed down there a couple weeks ago where, where you're at. Oh, nice. Were you going to come say hi? Yeah, we had a, yeah. Sorry Quick about trip. that. I should have, I know. Uh, next time you're down, let's go do lunch or something.